Hey, what's up guys? This is Neil Reyes and I want to welcome you to today's episode of Champions Minute. Today, I want to talk with you about what it feels like to go through spiritual drought. Oftentimes when I talk to people, they'll tell me things like they feel distant from God or they feel like they can't hear his voice or like there's a separation between them. And that's something that I refer to as spiritual drought. Today, we're going to discuss how to reconnect with God and get over that dry place. Get ready. Drop to So today we're going to talk about a topic that I've titled Overcoming Spiritual Drought. Again, today's topic is titled Overcoming Spiritual Drought. In fact, what I want to really talk to you and get at the heart at today is how to overcome evaporated Christianity. Now, some people say, what do you mean by evaporated Christianity? I'm so glad you asked. When I talk about evaporated Christianity, if you've ever had, like anyone who's ever had a little small gas can, whether if it's a big one, a little one, but a portable gas can that they carry, you know, the kind you use when you fill up your uh, lawnmower with gas or your, you know, weed eater or something like that. You know, gasoline is combustible and it's a type of fuel that can propel. It's something you use as a fuel to power. But one of the principles is it evaporates quickly. That's why you have to leave it sealed with the cap on. Otherwise, the gas will eventually evaporate. Well, our Christianity is much the same. You know, what happens with the gas can is that if you fill it up with gas and you leave it with the cap off, given enough time, that gas can will dry up and will no longer have any fuel in it. Now, you might be able to pick up that gas can and open the lid. You might be able to smell inside and whoo, right away, you're going to know what was in that gas can. It was gasoline. But fumes cannot power anything you want to move. You can't fill up your lawnmower with fumes. You can't fill up your weed eater with fumes. You can't fill up your chainsaw or your power washer with fuel or your vehicle with fuel. The fact is the substance it needs to power it to go is not there. All that's left are the fumes. Evaporated Christianity is the same exact thing. So many times, in fact, one of the most common things I come across in believers, no matter where I go, no matter where I teach, where I'm at, one of the most common underlying themes, I'm not talking that all people struggle with this, but one of the most common underlying themes you run across across the body of Christ is that many, many believers feel distant from God. They feel that they are at a place where they can't hear from God as good as they once did. They feel like as if they don't know him as well as they did, or they're not seeing him work as fluently or fluently or fluidly in their life like they once did. And that's what I uh, refer to as evaporated Christianity or overcoming spiritual drought. It's a spiritual drought that you're in. Well, how does a natural drought start? A natural drought starts by a lack of rain. When there's not enough rain, you're going to enter drought, meaning you're consuming more than you're replenishing. After a while, if the drought goes long enough, your lakes, your rivers, your, you know, all of that, your ponds, those beds will go dry because you have no more water to pour from, pull from because it hasn't been replenished. Your walk with God is identical to that. You must daily put into your soul or to your spirit or replenish what you're pulling or placing a demand to come out. In other words, you have got to feed yourself with God's words. We have so many believers in this world who are walking around being led by their feelings or by their emotions. You know, it tells us in the word very clearly that we're not to be led by our emotions. We're not to be led by our feelings. We're to be led by our spirit, man. In fact, if I were teaching on alignment, I would teach you that first you have your spirit, then your soul, then your body. Your spirit, then your soul, then your body. And what's above your spirit? It's the spirit and word of God. That's your supreme covering. Your body is to line up to your soul. Your soul is to line up to your spirit. And your spirit is to line up to the spirit 
and word of God. But you cannot live off of yesterday's manna. What I mean by that is when when uh, Moses led the Hebrews out of Egypt and they had been in captivity and they were going to enter the promised land. Well, if you know the story, they rebelled against God. So they had to wander in the wilderness for 40 years. Well, as they did that, God provided for their food and for their needs every day. He rained down from heaven. He rained down, literally rained down manna for them. But after a while, even though they saw all the miraculous works of God that led to their freedom from their captivity, that they blessed, that he blessed them in the wilderness, they still grumbled and complained. You know, there's a principle about being grateful for what you have instead of ungrateful for what you're not. My wife and I have taught that to our kids since the moment they could speak. Learn to be grateful for what you have instead of ungrateful for what you don't. They were ungrateful for what they didn't have. They even started to talk about yesteryear where they were talking about when they got to eat onions, when they had to, that's onions is all they had to eat in Egypt, but they got to talk about eating onions. Man, remember onion soup, you know, onion tacos, onion burgers. No, I don't know, but they were talking about onions, 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 instead of talking about God's heavenly food. But God told them that they could not store up with the man, the manna, they could not store up enough manna for the next day. They were only to grab what they needed for that day, and the next day, fresh manna would come down. Well, as believers, we're to store up in us every single day God's Word. When I talk to believers who are struggling or believers, you know, and I I hate to say this but because it's sad, but I'll have friends, I mean like close friends of mine, who have been to our studies, they followed our teachings, they're connected with us and we're fellowshipping each other. You know, it says iron sharpens iron. And we'll spend some time away from them for whatever reason. You know, oftentimes it's because, you know, like now I live in San Antonio and when I reconnect with my friends back in Albuquerque, people who are close with me, Oftentimes when I get around some, not all, but some of those people, I find them in a worse situation than what they were when we were hanging out and they were actively engaged in our teachings. And when I look at that and I start to talk to them and there's no judgment there. These are people I love and care about. And as I ask them, hey, how are things going? And they're like, "Uh, it's going all right. Kind of been struggling. Things are going a little rough. It's okay." I can always tell by the words that are coming out of their mouth where they're at spiritually and as we dive into it because we care about each other and when you care about each other you have a respectful relationship with each other to say tough things to each other at times because you love each other now when i say tough things i'm not talking offensive things i'm not talking putting each other down but i'm talking you're able to speak with them and talk about things that really really matter to you and as i ask them hey what's going on it's it's almost instantly i find out they're not spending time in the word like they used to they're not really following any teachings anymore it doesn't have to be my teachings it can be anyone's in fact anyone who's close to me i point them to lots of other ministries there's great ministries that i follow and when they come to me i don't say oh go listen to this teaching i did i say oh man you should check out this guy or check out this woman or this person you know we we just want to see them connected and blessed but they stay away from it and what happens is they drift And as they drift, another term that's run around in the church is that they've backslidden. Now, backslidden doesn't always refer to that, but sometimes it means they've just become stale. And it always, 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 always has to do with what they're allowing into their soul gates. Now, when I talk about your soul gates, every person has three soul gates. You have your eye gate, which is what you see. You have your ear gate, which is what you hear, and your mouth gate, which is what you speak into your soul. With that, every time I come across someone who's experiencing a spiritual drought or evaporated Christianity, it's always, always due to what's coming in their eyes and specifically their ears. Meaning, at some point, they didn't stop hearing, they just stopped listening to God's Word. They started spending a little less time in His Word. They quit dedicating those little moments during the day to spend time before Him, or time in prayer, or time in His Word. They quit listening to teachings. Sometimes church even becomes kind of, instead of something that was a staple in their routine, it becomes something that's a little easier to miss. 
And it almost always leads to them going back to the type of things they were doing in the world. And it almost always starts with the type of music they used to listen to. At some point, believers, when they get serious about this thing, they'll find that the music they once listened to is now no longer, not even is it appealing to them, it's actually offensive to their spirit. But as a believer drifts and as a believer quits feeding or replenishing the source, they'll start to drift back to where they were before and go back to the things they've always known. Guys, I hope you have found this short teaching an encouragement to you. We want to remind you to connect with us at our website at neilreyes.com and check out all of our resources. We have our Champions Walk teachings, which are our deep dive ministry broadcast. And we have our Champions Minute blog, which are our daily vlogs we release Monday through Friday. They're usually about eight to 10 minutes long. They're just quick, insightful words meant to encourage you, build you up and help you throughout your day. Guys, we are so thankful for you. We want to remind you that Jesus is Lord and he loves you. And so do we. Thank you so much and have a blessed day.